Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Now, many of you may have seen the recent announcement by Wargaming, which is up on the screen, about rebalancing Tier 10 tanks in Update 9.1, which actually is not the next update, it's the update after that. So what is this all about? Well, balancing takes place more often than you realise, but this is really one of the first times that almost an entire tier has been subjected to, well, a balancing exercise. So let's start off with the largest and biggest culprit. Yes, of the T100 LT, this little tanky here. So what can I say about this one? This is only recently introduced, this tank, and you know, at the end of the day, it's had a significant impact upon the game, not going to lie. It's clearly a very, very strong tank. In fact, some would argue, with good justification, it's far too strong. And it always needed something to reduce its in-game, well, its game-changing impact. Yeah, some players will struggle in this tank. But when the top pro teams, especially here on the EU server, roll out in the very top championship with no less than five of these little tanks, then you know something with the tank is not quite right. It's not really balanced. That pro team on the EU server then went on to win the spring season and they proved that this little tank, the T100 LT, needed to be looked at. And, you know, let's be honest, it needed to be seriously looked at. I mean, forget the spotting mechanic that this little light has, which in itself is a bit of a pain in the posterior. The fact that it has very troll armor, especially on the sides, and awesome DPM, along with its low, sleek profile and fantastic ability, mobility, sorry, it really did set it up to be a game changer, and a game changer it certainly was. The T100 was therefore always going to be rebalanced at some stage, and rightly so. But rebalancing one tank can lead to issues elsewhere, and so on and so on. The, this little T100 itself, well, it's going to have its HP and DPM and all armor effectively nerfed, which should remove some of its dominance abilities. Okay, they haven't touched the spotting mechanic, but uh, you know, the spotting mechanic is the spotting mechanic. And whilst I see the reasoning behind the T100, there are other balancing exercises taking place that makes you scratch your head a little bit. So let's have a look at what those tanks may actually be. Well, we'll deal with, well, there's two of them. There's firstly, sorry, wrong tank. There's firstly this little beastie, the FV4005. Now the 4005 is a TD and I like this TD. It's it's a bloody nice one. Both uh, both the tanks I'm going to look at, the 4005 and the AMX 50B, are auto loaders. Uh, obviously, one is a heavy and one is a TD. Both have a three shell clip, and I've always argued that both tanks have a similar kind of play style. In fact, I play the FB 4005 pretty similar to how I would play a 50B. Now, obviously, there are big differences between the two, most notably the size of the turret and the armor on that turret, with the 50B being far stronger and lower than the FV4005. And the turret of the 4005 really does love to be HE'd. Yeah, it does. But aside from that, the guns are pretty similar. Yeah, 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 there are slight differences, but the reload times the interclip reload and the damage are all pretty close. Okay, the FV is a TD. It, it, it packs a hard punch, but only just. I mean, both guns are a three clip magazine and Wargaming have decided to change this to a four clip. Why? Don't know, but we will look into it. So, you know, if we move across now to the little heavy of the 50B, I mean, the 50B is a beautiful tank. I mean, let's have a look at these tanks in depth. In both cases, single shot damage is going to be decreased. With the 50B, that is set to drop from 400 to, I can only speculate, which I will do in a moment. And with the 4005, that's going to drop from 460. The additional shower, it appears, will not 
impact the overall burst damage. That's what you get DPM wise if you manage to get your entire clip into a tank. Now, if that's true, the FV single shot will drop pretty significantly by 100 actually. Now its current burst damage is 1380, meaning that if it remains ineffective, i.e. the burst damage, then a single shot drops from 460 to that of 345. Now the same will apply to the 50B. That currently has a burst damage of 1200 and at 400 per single shot. So if the burst damage remains unchanged with both, then the single shot drops from 400 to that of 300. That's pretty significant, really, especially when both tanks already have a magazine reload time of 17.2 seconds. Obviously, that will increase, or at least should, with the additional shells in the magazine. Now, in fairness, I've long argued that both tanks are pretty easy 4K damage machines. So it's no great surprise to me that Wargaming are looking at combating that in some manner. Adding an additional shell should make these tanks slightly harder to play without actually reducing their ability to knock out high damage. It just won't be as quick or as simple as it is now. I mean, the 50B also has some other little tinkerings, such as the accuracy, aim time, and lower. F and they're going to lower the uh, the frontal armor and decrease it, along with the accuracy and the aim time. Again, that really doesn't come as a surprise to me, because let's face it, the 50B is a stonking tank, and in the right hands, it, it really is, you know, a stonking tank. The FV also has its interclip reload decreased, which again is not overly surprising considering that this thing knocks out close to 1400 damage per clip with an interclip reload of 3 seconds, which is pretty devastating to be honest. Now many of you may wonder why Tinker was something that isn't really broken. Well, those three tanks at the moment are very strong indeed, and they're always destined to be tinkered in some manner. What about next on the list. So next on the list is going to be the 50B, uh, sorry, the E50M. Now the E50M, many have argued with justification that it doesn't need adjusting. It's good enough, so leave it alone. Well, that's pretty debatable. Yes, the 50M is a good tank, but Wargaming have long ignored the mediums as they attempted to bring their heavies back into the game and stop the dominance that the mediums once had. Now we have a heavy dominance in this game, the meta is heavy, and the mediums have taken a back seat, both to the heavies and to the likes of the T100. Previous updates, the US mediums got tinkered with in order to bring them back into the fold, and now the E50M is being looked at. Firstly, World Gaming are going to change the APCR standard ammunition to that of AP. Does that mean heat is going? Well, I don't think so because I think what Wargaming are trying to do here is separate the E50M to that of the Leo 1. Both tanks have effectively the same gun. They have the same ammunition. Okay, the E50M has armor, the Leo 1 doesn't, but compare those two German mediums to the T62A and the Object 140, the Russian mediums. Now, the Object 140 has AP and heat, the T62A as APCR and heat. So it looks like basically what Wargaming are doing is drawing a distinction between the Leo 1 and the E50M. That change, however, will apparently increase the DPM. Now currently it has 3053, so what it will increase to, well I don't really know. They also plan to reduce the accuracy and the single shot damage which actually makes no sense to me as such. I mean, the whole point of the German mediums is that they're meant to be very accurate, think Leo 1. Not only that, but the damage output on the E50M is no different to the other meds with the same ammo loadout, namely 350. However, if they do change the APCR to AP and bring it in line with the Object 140, then the output of the damage will drop from 350 to that of 310 because that's what the Object 140 does. And that really will draw a distinction between this tank and the Leo 1. Why have they done this? 
Well, I'll get on to the overall goals of wargaming soon. But it, it is basically to set a distinction. They want to give the lightly armoured Leo one the better gun and the better armoured E50M a slightly significant, insignificant, a slightly lesser gun, so to speak. That gives variation. And it will therefore be, you know, like the E50M will be the Object 140 to the T62 that will be the Leo 1. Very similar tanks, but with small differing abilities. Finally, we come to the American Heavy, which is the T95 E6. It's a collector. Now, this tank is vastly overlooked, I'm going to be honest with you. Why this one is singled out is anybody's guess, especially when the likes of the 30B, the AMX collector, needs a little bit of attention, methinks. However, I would argue that the T95 E6 is one of the least played tier X tanks. No doubt Wargaming are looking to bring this one back into the store at some point, and therefore some attention needs to be given to it. The plan overall is to increase the DPM and the speed. Not a bad thing, really, especially when you consider the introduction of the Concept 1B, which is very similar in that respect. It has the same DPM, but the Concept is slightly faster, three kilometers faster. However, they also plan to weaken the side of the turret cheeks. This is on a tank that has a huge, massive cupola on its head that every man and his dog aims for. Clearly, there's something about the overall turret armor that Wargaming considers to be unbalanced. And yes, the turret cheeks on this one are pretty stonking, but I can't get away from that massive cupola. Again, this is probably more about setting it aside from the Concept 1B. That's merely guesswork on my part, based on what Wargaming have announced. These are merely the tanks I've looked at that Wargaming have given us the parameters of. They also say that almost all the tier 10 tanks will be rebalanced. Now they haven't specified what tanks and what rebalances that will take place, apart from the ones that I've mentioned here. But they have outlined their overall plan, which is as follows. They, need, they want to try and make the vehicles have clear strengths and clear weaknesses. That's pretty straightforward. They want to vary the tanks within the same class and make them differ slightly more. Hence the reason why the T95 E6 and the Concept 1B will have that sort of difference. E50M and Leo 1 will have those sort of differences. But they also want to bring new experiences as some tanks will be played differently. I mean, these goals and for that Wargaming have set themselves are not necessarily a bad thing, to be honest. And at least Wargaming are attempting to bring some variation into the top tier to give players a different experience. No doubt many out there will not like these proposed changes. I get that. I understand that. After all, nobody really likes to embrace change. But maybe, just maybe, these little adjustments could benefit the tier overall. It obviously won't prevent tear rushing or such, nor will it lead to the removal of the special consumables, the things that generally lead to imbalance in the first place. But until we actually see the effect these changes will have on the actual tanks, and thus the game, we're pretty fly we're pl flying blindly really, and we really just don't know what the effect may or may not be. Maybe the open test will shed some light on this, and allow those who are part of the open test to see for themselves if these balance changes are good or bad. I mean, until then, we can only speculate based on what we have now. And in some cases, we, seem, we, see, we, we are seeing very good tanks getting a nerf. And that always upsets a lot of people. I mean, look, YouTubers, great many YouTubers out there, swear blind that the 50B is like a big damage machine, which it is. So if that's the case, then yeah, it's understandable that a little tinkering is going to take place. And seriously, like I said, if you're one of those people who doesn't think the T100LT is, is, is very, very strong, then to be fair, you're in the minority because it is a very strong tank. Anyway, that has just been a sort of overview of what Wargaming have announced. So I'm not bringing you anything more than what they've said. I'm just giving you a little bit of sort of insight into my opinion here. By all means, I'd like to hear what you have to say. I want to know your thoughts, your comments, your views on this. So let me know in the comments. Um, I've been Fujit. That has been a quick overview of the balance changes that are coming in 9.1. Not the next update, the one after that. 
So until the next time, guys, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.